Okay, Derek, I see how it is. You're going to keep doing this. So, just fair warning to you, I've decided I am going to sort out the uh, current issue. And if you cause me any trouble, I'm going to fix you with these two things. Because it's the only thing that will. Just, just, just be aware of that. I'm just going to put that out there before we start. Hey, everybody. I'm so excited to be here working on the DR. You know, it is so good to be... Uh, working on it and putting more money into it rather than riding it because that's so much more fun. <laughs> okay, so uh, if you're not fully aware of the Restoration Z project uh, with this bike and what and the recent issues to do with the forks that we had them sent off, you won't fully understand what's going on here, but um, watch the recent videos to do the forks and you'll kind of be up to date with this current issue. So, my patrons are aware of this because I had to, well, I discovered something and I had to just sit and think about it for a few days because the forks came back. One of the things that the uh, the fork company did, um, I'll put their name here. They're absolutely amazing people. Uh, I paid for the work to be done, but he was he was really good and very knowledgeable. Uh, TW Suspension Tech, um, thank you very much for working on my forks. He mentioned to me before he gave them back to me, just make sure that your triples aren't tweaked. Now I put the forks back in, and it was a bit tricky to tell how easily they were going in because you to check if there's a tweaked yoke, you need to be able to slide them through cleanly. These rubber holders for the headlight really slow that process down and it makes it difficult to know what's stopping things getting through. They got through without too much trouble. It wasn't like I had to like force them or anything, but I think these rubber things are the main thing slowing that down. Anyway, got everything in, got it all talked up, went to move the headstock and it's notching. It's, it's, uh, you can't see this, but this feels fine. And then it goes bump, 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 bump. Unsurprisingly, the bearing has gone in, well, if it was on the boat, it would be known as the mids. Because obviously you tend to go in a straight line, on some of the gearing systems, I used to do rest, uh, work servicing and steering systems from yachts. That's the boat work I used to do. Uh, they would always, the bearings, when they'd go, they'd always go, it, all the gears would be worn in the middle part. Because you're always going just slightly left and right of straight, most of the time. Yeah, sure you do full on turns, but most of the time your bearings are working through just the middle part. So that's the bit that's going to go over time. So in ways, I'm glad it's there because it means that it probably is definitely the bearings. But but obviously, because of what was said about the forks and putting them back in and then this appearing because it was not doing it before, I was then concerned that maybe my yokes are tweaked so badly that when they were in, they were causing notching. Now, I spoke to a, a, an expert in chassis and things and he said, no, there is there is no way you're getting a set of forks actually through the yokes if they were so bad that they were causing notching in the headset. So it seems like Derek has done his classic thing, which is just break something else entirely different the moment you fix something before. Uh, this has happened a few times, but yeah. So I, I was left in a situation of, right, what do I do? Because doing this in here is a bit tricky because it's on this stand and it's not entirely straight and checking stuff's a bit difficult. And I also don't have the tools to get one of the bearings off of the yoke. So my options were, pay someone to do it like i spoke to hazeman motorcycles to work out sort of the price that they would charge even they you know they look after me but i'm still gonna be paying my way uh the price is like yeah i could do with not spending that um considering how cheap the bearings are going to be but of course it's the easy option where i just give it to them and get it back fixed or as i say i do it myself and do videos on it so i was a bit on the fence as to whether i was going to do it or not and then jake the garden snake he made a very good point which i didn't consider which is the only part you really really need a specialist tool to do for on this job is to remove the spindle bearing off of the bottom yoke and of course that fits in a backpack i can take that on my other bike and go and get that switch somewhere else the only things in the bike that will be a problem for me to get out or new ones in but they shouldn't be because i can probably make what well, i can buy a tool or i can make a tool is the bearing braces in the top and the bottom and i'll explain that in a minute the first thing I want to do in this video is I'm going to take the front wheel back off, I'm going to take the forks back out, I'm going to take the headlight off, and I'm then going to see if these bearings are still notching. One of the things I get asked quite a bit whenever I point out something else breaks on this bike is people say, why do you bother keeping on fixing? Really? Earlier on, I had to pull the lever in, and I noticed there was a little bit of brake fluid up here, which means that this master cylinder cover is not sealing properly, which means the gasket inside probably just needs replacing. Ah! Oh. Any day now! Yeah, people um, do say to me, 
quite regularly when something goes wrong on this bike. Like, why do you keep fixing this bike? Just sell it and get rid of it. And I never understood it. And I, I still don't understand it because like, one, you can just fix things and things do break. Because the irony of this is that I've had 10 times more trouble with this bike, this Japanese actually made in Japan bike, than my Chinese ones. And I've had this for less time. And I spent my entire early days of my channel being told how terrible Chinese bikes are and how my bike is awful, etc, etc. Yeah, well, when it broke, it cost me 30 quid to fix it, not three grand. But yeah, I mean, the idea of like stopping and just selling a bike with a big issue like this, which would be classed as a true easy fix, would be silly. Because you're literally throwing your money away because you know, in sellings, when someone says easy fix, it's not an easy fix. Otherwise they would do it. Can't be asked to fix something is there, but if it's easy and it's gonna fix a big issue, which is obviously gonna increase the value of the bike, why wouldn't you fix it? So I wouldn't leave a problem unresolved and then sell the bike. That doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever. The other thing that people forget or maybe don't realize is the, the DRZ400SM, I think, could be considered now a future classic, in a way, because it was the last of its kind, it was the last carburetted supermoto in the UK, to my understanding, because it was one of the few supermotos in the UK models that are sold here. And the thing is, some people do just want to have an old school carbonara bike. Into the carbonara. You know, for the same reason that People want an old 1950s bike that, you know, constantly breaks for the few times that it is working. They love it. Well, this isn't that. This is just a, just a vindictive bike and maintenance, basically. And the value of these bikes is going up and up. So, <laughs> Combustation. I totally forgot I'd only really lightly done up the pinch bolts. Oh, the, the value of the... I feel like this bike is just becoming a meme. It's just me for year after year battling with it head to head. See, that one slides out as well. No issues. Ow. I'm, uh, I'm having to be very careful at the moment. Um, so the other day, I was cutting up a piece of cardboard with a serrated knife and I broke the number one rule of knives. Now, keep in mind, I was a chef for seven years and I cut myself twice, I think it was, in those seven years because I follow this rule. Never let the knife and your hand exist in the same space at the same time. And if you follow that rule, you never cut yourself. And don't lead into situations where that can happen. Well, let's <laughs> say so I was chopping up some cardboard with a serrated knife, didn't realise where my thumb finger was on the other side and cut straight through it. It doesn't look like much right now, but five days ago, this was a flapping open thing with blood pissing everywhere. Just, just a small, just a small nick, right? Nothing much, apart from the fact that it actually starts inside my nail. It went all the way through into my nail. So I basically had to make steri strips out of some surgical tape and like keep it together for a few days. I have just noticed I've slightly split it and it's not bleeding, so that's good. Uh, but I'm gonna have to be really careful because as you can imagine, this is my clutch hand. If I don't let this heal, every time I pull the clutch, so at the moment if I'm riding, I'm having to do it like this. If I use this finger, I'm probably gonna split it again and again and again and again. I am not a walking disaster. I'm just having issues at the moment. Um, ah! Then goes into the person here, comes out of the side and spills out in petrol form. Okay, well, let's take the headlight unit out. Okay. okay, so the headlight assembly's out. These are the bits that the forks go through, and these are the bits that make it difficult to feel the forks going through the, the yokes. So that's now out of the way. Okay, so now the forks are out. We will truly know if it's the headstock bearings that are the... I mean, look, you can actually see it now. That makes it official. The headstock bearings are indeed completely knackered. It's just so bizarre because during the build, obviously, I checked the headstock bearings. and was like, yeah, they're fine. There's no problem. And in, the, in that time, they were sat without forks in them for about 
or was it two months or so, maybe longer at this point, they did that. Like they won't even turn. Right, this is a cross section of the headstock. So the, here is the bike, here is the tube on the frame, that's facing the front. In here, you have some bearing races. What that bearing race looks like is like a rounded cup. Obviously, it's like a, imagine a thick walled piece of tube and you chamfer the edges in. So, um, it's kind of, the walls are sort of that shape. It, you know, it goes across here. So this is like where it is and there's like a side view through it. These two race seats are pressed into the frame itself. Now you can get an edge from the, of the bottom one from the top and the, of the top one from the bottom and you basically knock them out and they come out quite easily. They're not massively tight. Well, they shouldn't be, I don't think. But yeah, I can get those out. Then getting new ones in, you'll use, well, the, what I'm planning to do is use a piece of all thread with a couple of metal discs which are made to the exact right dimensions that I can get those starting to see, put the all thread through with a, you know, with a nut on the top and just slowly pull those in. I much rather pull bearings in than hit them in because, well, from the work that I've done, pu push, pu pu sorry, pressing bearings in or pulling them in is much better than hitting them because if you hit them and they're slightly off to one side, you just start multiplying your issues as it gets more and more jammed. So doing it that way, pressing stuff in is better. Okay, so this here is the yoke or the triples. Uh, and on the bottom one, it's basically the bottom bracket like this. There is a shaft that comes up the middle and then the bearing is press fit on here, one of them. And it's a tapered bearing. So it's that sort of shape. This is in drums all the way around like that. And then that fits into the cup which is the opposite. And so when it's together, it kind of looks like a normal bearing, apart from the fact that these are designed to take load this way and side to side. A normal bearing, you know, when it's just um, a ring and a ring and then balls on the inside, they are not designed to take side thrusting loads. They're designed to take loads directly on top uh, or, or around, should we say. So it's the forces the outer race being pushed onto a ball bearing which is pushing onto the, the central um, core of the bearing. So that is press fit onto this tube which is this which goes through here. The top bearing will just lift out. It's a different size and it will just lift off the top because on top of this you have a washer and a plate basically that holds it in place and then you have your big cap which is the one you see you know when you look down on your dials you know you've got your clocks here that's there. So what we're going to have to do is take that cap off, take that bearing out, s take off the top yokes, which is this part with the handlebars attached to. The handlebars would have been attached on here. Take that off, pull this out. This is small and it can fit in my backpack and I can take that to uh, probably Hazemar Motorcycles or somewhere that's got a press or the tool to get that off and put the new one on. Um, so that bit I can't do myself, I just can't, so I'm going to get them to do that. But getting these out and replacing them, I should be able to do that at home. And obviously the secondary benefit of doing this is that we take out the yokes anyway and we can check to see if they're tweaked. Tweaked, not in the sense of, if you imagine this is the top yoke, this okay, it just kind of looks like an angry snake, but if you imagine this is the top yoke, this is the bottom yoke, and you've got another one on the other side, if they get twisted sort of that way, where the front wheel and the handlebars aren't pointing in the same direction, that's an easy thing to correct because the, nothing's bent, it's just offset inside of the yokes itself. The tweaking that we need to be concerned about is whether this one here is tweaked up or down. Because from above, what happens is one of your fork tubes is here and one of them's here. Yeah, that's an exaggerated version. But it means that rather than the both forks taking an even load, one of them's leading and that causes it to cause damage to the seals prematurely and can even cause it to open a gap enough for it to leak oil. So by taking these off, we can replace that that we definitely know needs doing now, and we can check to see if they're straight at the same time. In theory, this is not being that complicated. The actual truth is, in between getting the forks done, the headstock bearings went, and that is that. I just got concerned because of all the other things that happened around it, and just being like, hold on, let's find out what's really going on here, and some anxiety mixed in with that as well. Yeah, so that is the job I need to do. I need to get the bearings, obviously, uh, and I need to get some all thread and some nuts and some, I think I've got enough steel plate that I can make the, the, the pressing washers that I need. So yeah, it should be 
I'm not saying, I'm not gonna say anything. It's a job we need to do, let's just say that. So yeah, I need to order those bearings and get those bits before I can get on. I suspect Wemoto is about to get an email from me about some bearings. I'm sorry, Wemoto, but thank you so much for supporting this channel as much as you have done. Talking of them, you know recently I said about how my battery turned out to be dead. That's not unsurprising. They have supplied for the build a brand new spanking lovely battery. But unfortunately, between getting this sent, I discovered that the headstock bearings have gone. And he is going to, my contact there, is going to laugh at this. At me. Okay, let's leave this on a positive note. In theory, once we have replaced these bearings and put this battery in the bike and put it back together, in theory, we can do that thing where you actually ride the bike. Are you prepared for that, Derek? Because I swear to God, you break something else and I really am going to burn you to the ground. It's got two wheels, look! It's got four wheels, you drive's wrong. What do you mean? What are they on the other side? Someone...